the problem of what to do with all of our trash is one of the most burning issues today. Globally, people produce a staggering 1.3 billion tons of waste every year. This garbage is just accumulating on Earth and bringing harm to both people and the environment. So why don't we just send all this waste off to burn up in the sun? Well, before we get into that, you need to understand just how much trash we're talking here. If you loaded just a year's worth of the world's waste on trucks and lined them all up bumper to bumper, this line would wrap around the planet 24 times. Every single day, people all over the world throw away 3.5 million tons of trash. Unfortunately, it gets worse. There are predictions that by the year 2100, there will be three times more waste, reaching a whopping 11 million tons a day. If you're wondering just how such a tremendous amount of trash can collect on the planet, consider this. In general, people throw away 99% of all the things they bought within six months of purchasing them. Right now, we need 1.7 Earths to get enough resources to support normal life and store all the waste. That's why it comes as no surprise that someone came up with the idea to simply launch it all into space and be rid of it. While that sounds like an effective solution to the waste crisis, as of right now, it just wouldn't work. First of all, people would have to launch this garbage straight into the sun. Now, as big as the sun is, it's also really far away. So the calculations would still have to be super precise. On top of that, scientists would have to predict all the possible dangers or mishaps, and that's just impossible. The thing is, if something went wrong, all this waste would end up on our planet's outer atmosphere. And there's already enough trash floating around Earth thanks to all the space missions that have been launched by different countries. Satellites that don't work anymore and rocket and spacecraft parts create dangerous traffic around the planet. Unfortunately, this space garbage already causes significant problems for different satellites as it is. Besides, it poses a potential risk to the International Space Station. The trash can hit astronauts while they're out on a spacewalk, or it can punch holes in the sides of the station. The trash that's up there now has already damaged several satellites. For example, in 1996, a French satellite became a victim of a hit-and-run space collision. A 10-year-old piece of an Ariane rocket collided with the satellite. The latter spun off its course, which caused a lot of turmoil in the control center. The situation with space garbage is so critical that there's an organization called Space Surveillance Network that's responsible for monitoring space trash and changing satellite routes to avoid collisions. The worst thing about space collisions is that when one satellite gets damaged, it affects others too. Many satellites work in networks, so if one part fails, the whole thing will stop functioning. For instance, just one damaged GPS satellite could disrupt the work of different banking and financial organizations. It'd mess up air travel, and even the GPS on your phone or in your car would stop working. After some time, all that trash that had been sent off to space could move so low that it'd return to the Earth's atmosphere. Naturally, some part of it would burn up during this process, but the biggest chunks could start falling back to the planet. You can imagine what destruction that would cause. But even if the trash didn't hit anything important on the surface and simply burned up in the atmosphere, it'd still pose a threat to both people and the environment. The problem is that when garbage burns, it produces dioxins, which are toxic chemicals. These chemicals can cause serious illnesses such as heart disease, lung problems, or even cancer. Now you can understand why it might not be worth launching our trash in the space. But you know, garbage floating around the planet or crashing back down isn't the only argument against this idea. The main issue is the cost of such an endeavor. Let's do the math together. It costs about $90 million to launch a medium-sized rocket. Its maximum capacity is 70 tons of materials. That means if people decided to get rid of all the trash that accumulates in a year, they'd need to launch roughly 18,250,000 rockets. That's a lot of rockets. Multiply that by 90 million a pop, and you can clearly see how this quadrillion, that's 15 zeros by the way, dollar project would just be impossible. Actually, it'd be over 1.6 quadrillion if you want to be exact. 
And you should remember that once you've launched these super expensive rockets, they won't ever return to Earth. Besides, don't forget about the launch pads. To launch such a whopping number of rockets, you need an area about the size of the entire US. That's why, unfortunately, the idea of launching garbage toward the sun or even into the Earth's orbit won't help humans out. People will just need to deal with this issue on their own. But don't panic just yet! Scientists all over the world are hard at work coming up with innovative ways to get rid of all the trash. And they include building blocks made of trash. Soon, we might see machines based on industrial waste compaction devices. But unlike the already existing ones that crush stuff in the cubes, these giant trash compactors would create special puzzle blocks that would be used later in construction. Their shapes could be programmed to create windows, domes, walls, or archways. This way, transparent plastic could be used to make windows, and metals could be turned into skeletal frameworks. As for organic waste, it could be used for temporary scaffolds that would decompose later. Recycling Garbage Sweden is known for its diligent recycling practices. In one way or another, they recycle almost 99% of household waste. People separate all the waste that can be reprocessed and take it to nearby recycling stations or leave it in special containers in their neighborhood. But that's not all. Sweden imports waste from other countries, too. It sounds weird at first, but they actually burn this trash and turn it into energy. The first waste incineration plant appeared way back in 1904, and there are now 32 plants throughout the country. Interestingly enough, the Swedes have managed to decrease heavy metal emissions by a staggering 99% in comparison with 1985. At the same time, the amount of incinerated garbage has tripled. Half of all household waste from all over the country is burnt at these plants. Since waste is pretty cheap, it can serve as a great alternative fuel. Naturally, there is some ash left after the trash gets burnt, but it's only 15% of the initial weight. Plant workers separate metal from this ash, and it goes to further recycling. As for tile and porcelain, they're later used in road construction. The remaining 1% from the initial amount of waste goes to landfills and dumps. And remember how the smoke from burning trash is usually extremely toxic? Well, incineration plants in Sweden have special filters that don't let any harmful substances through. On the other hand, some people believe that this strategy has its own drawbacks. They say that burning garbage to produce energy sabotages the recycling process. For example, paper can be recycled up to six times. Only after that does it turn into dust. Besides, burning products or materials and using that energy to make new ones is more energy consuming than recycling the already existing things. However, the Swedish are working on this problem. For example, producers are encouraged to manufacture things that'll have a longer lifespan. Recruiting Plastic Eating Bacteria In 2016, the world got some incredible news. A bacterium living in a Japanese waste dump seemed to enjoy chowing down on PET, or polyethylene terephthalate. This is the material used to make plastic bottles. The bacterium ate this stuff and used this artificial material as an energy source. In other words, the bacterium produces enzymes that can break down plastic much faster than Mother Nature can. So, instead of 450 years, it takes just a couple of days for the PET to decompose. It's no wonder scientists are working on creating an artificially engineered plastic-eating enzyme that they could put in massive industrial reactors. This substance would break plastic down into its building block components very fast. If researchers succeeded, it could be the answer to getting rid of plastic waste. Besides, it would mean that, let's say plastic bottles will undergo full recycling. It may lead to a drop in oil drilling because new plastic products will be produced from old ones. Seems the future is looking brighter every day. Do you recycle or try to lead a low-waste lifestyle? Leave your methods in the comments below. Remember to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the Bright Side of Life. Hey.